Okay, so I have my um, blades here, my anvil. I called them and told them I'm not happy because there's no blade edge on this. And I know that there's a blade edge on the other brands that when, you, when they come out, they have a blade edge on them. Uh, but I called the bandit rep and he said this uh, <laughs> doesn't need a blade on it. And I called the sharpening guy. And he said that these anvils just need to be straight. They don't need a, a sharp edge on them at all. So uh, that was my mistake, uh, $130 later. But anyway, um, these blades here, I compared uh, the length to that anvil, which is 12, and these are exactly 12. Um, and so uh, they do have the uh, end taper on them. There, so there is your end, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, the two flats on each side have a taper, and then the, the blade itself has a taper as well which does look to be a right around 40 that does look like 3 8 so and then as far as width goes they start out at 3 inches mine are like 2 and 3 quarters so now I can install these bad boys and take my other ones to the shop while these are um, while these are being uh, or yeah I'll use these and then I'll sharpen the other ones and then I'll just switch them and that way I always have the ability to use a uh, the proper sharpening service So, there's your drum access from the top. Three bolts hold this in. Right there, I just put them here. And focus, and then uh, open that up. Now, this is a hinged part, but it stops here. You can't hinge the whole thing down. So that part of the chute right there has to set, has to set forward on this pin uh, right here. So, well actually this is the pin here and this is the little sleeve that it goes into. But I left one nut on there so uh, I'll take that nut off and then drop this down. These areas get really junked out full of like wood chip chunks and sawdust and stuff and it can make it kind of difficult to get a socket on there. So I have a little pick. This is a 90 degree pick, and this is the one I like to use, but you can also use like a screwdriver, but screwdriver is bulky. And I just pick in there like this and get all the, you can't really see it because I already got it all, but there's a bunch of stuff around these bolts. And now when I am put my socket in there, it'll be able to actually go over the head of the bolt all the way. I'm just gonna take out the bolts. This is not gonna get the knives out. They'll be stuck. Just gets the bolts out. got the bolts out now I have to um, well there's actually a little Allen here uh, this tiny Allen bolt this tiny Allen bolt right here comes out and those are just there to retain um, the actual uh, well it's to fill the hole so the hole doesn't get filled with dirt but you take that screw out and then you get a longer one and when the screw goes in uh, it basically is threaded onto this this uh, tapered piece here and so as it goes in it hits this back point right here and it pushes that taper thing out because right now that's so tight you can't just hit it with a hammer to get it out. That thing is unbelievably tight. This is one thing that if you know about this, I would definitely benefit from your recommendation. When I feed a bolt down into this hole, here's what always happens. The bolt is going down like it's supposed to, and because this is not flat right here, it deviates. You can even see where the bolt was before off center. This is actually, this, one of these had a broken off tap in it, 
And so this one doesn't thread perfect. And you know, the threads can't be restored basically. So it would either have to be blown out and then I'd have to blow out all of them. It's hard for me to control the front to back motion. So I should be able to, if I get up here, just wobble it left to right. Um, so now I have to take out these bolts because I'm putting in a different set of blades and these bolts are going to have to get threaded in, but I know that they're all obstructed on the back side. So you can see these holes right here are full of wood chips. So now I have to figure out how to get all those wood chips out before I screw those bolts in. We got those bolts out, um, the, the uh, well I don't know what they're called, but the adjustment bolts. I'll show you what they look like. So where are those adjustment bolts? Right here. Oh shoot, they look like sockets. So these are the adjustment bolts. You got to make sure these threads are really nice um, because if they get stuck in there you're in bad trouble. So we cleaned them up and now Mike here is cleaning up the... Um, the tapered wedges so they can be nice and clean for installation so everything is nice and tight. We don't want any debris stuck in there. So 
right now I'm cleaning out these pockets where the where the washers go because some of my washers were damaged from uh, from being pressed down on top of the dirt so this stuff kind of happens when you're in a hurry taking things apart but we're gonna try to make it real nice this time Just like that get all this filth out of here since my um, I'm putting new blades in they're gonna go deeper in this flat right here and so I have to make sure the back side of this flat is all clean and smooth all right so this is anti-seize. We're just putting this on these uh, uh, setting bolts, and these things are cool. They have an Allen on the bottom too, in case you mess up the one on the top or damage the bolt somehow. Pretty awesome, huh? So, in theory, you can thread these out from underneath as well. Although I don't know if there's actually enough space for it. Um, oops. But uh, yeah, so we're just putting these in here. All right, guys. <laughs> So, right here, I have the bracket that holds my anvil is right where my finger is. These two bolts have to come loose and then come down so that that has space to come out through this gap right here. And then I have my big ratchet on one of the two nuts that goes to these this bolt and that bolt go to the actual, um, well they keep it from falling basically is what they do. Um, and they hold it flat to this uh, body section right here. So I'm going to do this without the camera because I can't hold this in work too. Alright so we got the anvil out and we are just taking off these two screws that go on top. And you can see the square shape there. And the new anvil is right here. So. That's what that looks like. And so we just take the screws out, put this on there, and re reinstall the block. Okay, I got the anvil, the new anvil in. Um, so there it is, right there, that shiny part by my middle finger. Um, and I basically just went by feel for how deep to go in. Uh, it had a lock nut on those bolts that hold it up. And those bolts are what you use to adjust it. So uh, when I put it back in, I just screwed it back to where I thought it was before, and then I tightened up those lock nuts with a uh, combination wrench. On my machine, it was a one and one eighths combination wrench, uh, and that's the same size for the bolts that hold the uh, that hold it to the, the the backing steel that holds the uh, anvil mount, and then. Uh, so that everything down below is, is one and one eighth, and I had to use a metric impact for part of it because it would would have been all day cranking a ratchet with a long handle ratchet. Uh, but I got the anvil in, and now it's time to um, start putting blades on. So pretty much what I do is I just adjust the screws, and I kind of balance the blade in there, and I hold it with my hand, and I turn the drum because if you don't, of course the blade will fall right out because it's facing down down a slope. But um. I'll, I'll try it on the drum and see how far it is away from the anvil and if it's too close I'll, back, I'll uh, adjust those screws, if it's too far away I'll adjust the screws until I have it to the right thickness. There's only 3% of all vehicles okay. from 3800 to 5800 dollars okay. and they offered her 66 okay. so and I told her that but I just said, my insurance guy said don't accept their first offer. Okay. Always had it at the at the thickness of cut that it came at. Okay. In other words, I've never adjusted the anvil, but the anvil tells you how far the blades are supposed to be away from here, right? Right. Because if this is three eighths, then it doesn't matter if your blade is this wide or that wide; it's still three eighths. Right. Because it's that how far it reaches to get your tolerance right. to the drum to the anvil. Right. So from, it really just matters drum. where the anvil is, and then that determines where all the blades are in relation to the drum. Right. So the anvil is essentially where it needs to be, I just really close on the right side, just to make it feel 
handle a little bit better. If you want to freaking look through the crap, dude, you can see what I'm looking at. All I look through over here, all I look through is I look through from this side at the light. Two different models. Not the H. So, so it's the XP? He didn't tell me it was the XP, he said it wasn't the H. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm assuming that would mean that it was the spacing for the blades to be really close to the anvil and not hit it and each time I bolted one down I checked it to spun it past the anvil to make sure it didn't hit. Once I have them all bolted in with the three bolts and the washer that goes into them uh, I just tightened them down to a torque spec of 110, 110 foot pounds and uh, I've never done it with a torque uh, thing before but because I never had one up until last year and I didn't know the specs because I didn't know what machine it was and I didn't know what the numbers were for it. So. Now we know and now we're doing it right. So that's the hole right there. It's got to have the bolt in it because uh, that, that hole throws the drum off balance actually to one side, which probably isn't a huge deal. But you also want something in those threads to keep them nice and clean because as you're running it, that'll fill up with filth and then you really need those threads to be good for the purpose that they're being exercised for. So let me tight these in and then we'll move on. Got those four bolts in there, and uh, now we have to get the uh, components essentially back down uh, to their original spot and uh, install them with their bolts. So that pretty much summarizes uh, what all goes into the um, sharpening process or the blade replacement process on the Chuck and Duck. This is a Bandit 1290. Um, I hope you benefited from the video and sorry about some of the angles being a little crappy but I just can't do everything and do the camera at the same time. So um, be careful and don't cut yourself on the knives. They're pretty sharp normally. If they're not sharp, they can still cut you. Uh, and I use the torque spec. It's good to torque things in right and use uh, anti-seize whenever possible because if that stuff seizes on, let's say you don't service it for a year and you're lazy, you go back and try to take it off later, you're not gonna be able to get it off easy and it's just gonna be a lot of trouble. So make sure everything's nice and tight. Make sure the spacing is right on the blades. Make sure that the drum turns freely without hitting the anvil or ticking. 
there's a ticking noise that blade could be just barely clipping the edge of the anvil and that could be bad so because uh, when it starts to turn even just a tiny bit of play in that bearing that thing can hop and jump and start biting and then rock the bearing and it's just a whole nightmare it makes an awful noise blows up everything and then you got to turn it off and replace all the parts so uh, hope it's been beneficial to you guys good luck out there